Hey, we're Barzero from France, and uh, these are crazy tour stories. Uh, so, like um, a week ago, we were on tour with bands called Converge and Neurosis, uh, that I know are very important bands for me. And um, I was taking a shower uh, before, like going on stage and everything. I was taking a shower, and I realized Scott Kelly from Neurosis was sound checking like next door. And you're taking a shower, and one of your hero is sound checking next to you, next to you, and that was kind of that moment where you realize you're on tour with bands you've always loved, and uh, that was kind of crazy. So that's one. That's one. I guess there's um, the very first tour we did. Very first tour we did with Birds in Row was a uh, European tour. We had we bought our own van with like money from our parents, pretty much. And uh, second day of tour, it breaks down. Like the engine is dead. Uh, in the middle of nowhere, Germany, close to Cottbus, um, like two meter high snow walls next to us in the middle of the night. Uh, and then we just think like, what are we going to do? Like, we've always wanted to go on tour in Europe and, uh, and this is like stopping us. What should we do? So we took a hotel room and luckily we were touring with a band called Parwin that had a member of a band called Comedy that has so many bad stories, like so many like cursed stories. And he kind of like upped the feeling for us. Like he really was like, oh man, that's no problem. And we started trying to find solutions. And I think that was the very first time we were confronted to the fact that the DIY scene is so powerful. So we called a guy from like the other the other side of Europe, asking like if he had a van for rent. And he was like, yeah, like are you a DIY, DIY band? Do you book your tours you're on your own? And we're like, yeah. So okay, I'm gonna do it for you. The guy drove in the middle of a snowstorm for like 15 hours, I think, on Red Bull, brought us the van and we just dropped him in Berlin. He, he took his flight and we finished the tour with this van and I think that was like the most uh, impressive, uh, yeah, impressive way of knowing how you can just be, uh, like how solidarity is important in, in what we do and how someone that doesn't know you can help you like a lot in what you're doing. So yeah, that was kind of a crazy story for me. Another one could be, we played in Cuba and you know like people are not used to have this kind of band so you play, sometimes that's pretty weird, you don't have a good gear and everything and after your show they put some music on monitors like I don't know like Slipknot, Slipknot ACDC or stuff like that and then everyone is like really involved into it and you're like, why did I play? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I guess that was... Or, and for, yeah, in, in Cuba you can get food poison, poison <laughs> like, quite big time as well. <laughs> I, I did, and uh, I remember like, uh, like bad situation, uh, like in Australia, first tour, we spent like 13 days on tour, and we had uh, four days off, and uh, nothing bad happened during the tour, but uh, on those, uh, like, we took two days to uh, to go like uh, uh, to the beach, or to the beach and, and stuff. And we uh, to camp. we we <laughs> totally we totally burned, and and then we got a sun heat, uh, yeah. and, uh, sun strike, yeah, sun sun strike. And then we uh, like we, we we were we spent a night like throwing up and uh, having fever and stuff and uh, it was really bad and our friend that was uh, he's normally our sound engineer but he was on tour with us with his other band he got stung by oh, yeah. so many uh, mosquitoes, mosquitoes at the same time like the, everywhere the next morning it was looking like quasimodo pretty much so we have to take him to the hospital in the he morning was solely, he was green like uh, so everything happened when we were on vacation pretty much <laughs> like during the tour everything was fine but when we yeah. started like trying to camp or whatever it was very bad. We also tried uh, very good food in Mexico City oh. and very spicy food. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the very last uh, tacos that we ate uh, were very, like the, the guacamole was very bad, like very spicy. Like it, we know it felt like it was a. Uh, it looked very nice, but yeah, <laughs> it was like really refreshing and everything. And yeah, I saw it, it, it Basically, in France, guacamole is not supposed to be spicy, right? But we didn't know Mexico, everything is spicy. 
So we went there, it was the last show, and, uh, and we were all about to have like some food with our friends and stuff, and uh, we pick up some street food, and there's like this guacamole that looks so refreshing, and we're all like, spoonful of it, bomb in the taco, and we start eating it, and his girlfriend looks at me with like tears in her eyes, yeah. and she's got like, um, lips like that, lips like huge <laughs> lips, and, and I'm like, what's going on? Stuff, like and I, I took like two bites of it and I had to go straight to the toilets because that was like too much, like we couldn't handle it and all the Mexican dudes were like sweating, like I don't understand, like what's what's going wrong? <laughs> Oh well, yeah, no, don't do that. If you if you go to Mexico, don't trust the food. Like you have to, you have to be careful. We did fine for five days, but yeah. the last one because we didn't trust them. It's the like. same. It's always the last one. Like in Cuba, we did, I did fine for twelve days, and the last yeah. pizza con queso ruined me like totally. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> be careful of the last day. <laughs>